Good morning, all. Hi, Judy Hatch. Hi, Barry and Margo. I don't have my mouse with me today, so you might hear a little bit more noise than usual. Joy and Steve Yamber, good morning. Hi, Sue McCausland. Kevin and Chris Vaughn, good morning to you. Hi, Jim Riggs. Mose and Marsha Nolan, good morning. Hi, Sandy Sauerbeck. Hi, Corey Lockridge. Judy Martin, Nancy Horvath. Robin Allen. Linda Clark, hello. Happy birthday to John Clark today. Hi, Doug Goddard. Amy Bowerman. Good morning. Hi, Judy Sutherland. Ken Woods, good morning. Larry and Carolyn Thomas, Joanne Butters, wow, Scott Johnson, and Don Jones. Hi, Norma Bentley. So it is Tuesday and it's the, the 4th of May. And if you hadn't heard, um, unfortunately, uh, Steve Stapleton Sr., um, you know, he's, was, he's been really battling a number of things, um, including a, an infection and then COVID and he had a pre-existing lung condition and he lost his fight yesterday. So um, he passed and he's surrounded by his family. And, uh, and uh, so we were able to pray that, but it is, it is uh, unfortunate, uh, obviously. We're gonna miss him t terribly. So we need to remember them, the, all the whole family in, there, in our prayers. And then um, we don't have any information about services or anything yet. So we'll see what happens. We'll let you know and keep you informed on that. The, um, and, um, Let's see, it is the 4th of May, right? So may the 4th be with you, as they say, if you're a, if you're a Star Wars fan. I never was, but uh, I get that. <laughs> so, hi, Sandy Sauerbeck. And, um, you know, when we announce people that have passed, it, it is a sad thing because we're gonna miss them terribly, but we also have a firm, firm, firm belief in the resurrection, so it is with that hope in the resurrection that we that we look at that. Hi, Sherry Keys. Um, let's see, today, finance committee is meeting at two o'clock to go over to go over our April results. And um, we also have uh, tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, on Zoom, uh, the, um, the deacons are meeting. So those are two things that are going on today at the church. Um, and of course, we still continue on with the uh, ChristNet. So we will have people at the church. Um, we have people cooking and packing, and then we're going to deliver um, the meals for our Christ church folks. Um, so that's all going on. And I, that's a lots of lots of things, lots of hands of Christ reaching out into the community. And uh, <clears throat> that's what we do. That's what we do. All right. It was raining this morning, and then I looked up, and the sun was brilliant and shining, and, and uh, so I think it's going to be a better day than I thought it was as far as weather goes. All right. We have, um, we're at 9.02, so it's time. I always try to start it at 9.02, give people time to come. We're going to go to our lectionary readings today, and it is, we need, boy, do we need God's word today, right? On the, on the heels of... Uh, the loss of Steve Stapleton. Um, oh, there is one thing I wanted to say. So um, if you go to click on Detroit and you do a search um, for Greenfield Village and um, uh, the, the, the right bicycle shop, they have an article there where they have uh, replaced uh, the the, made it original, made it look like original when that building was moved from Ohio. Um, the facade never made it, but they did have some pictures. And our own Mose Nolan worked on that. When I first got here, and then one of the first times that I met him, he told me that story. And then I saw that uh, I saw that uh, Mose had put it up on his Facebook page. So, um, you know, something to be proud of. And uh, 
um, looked at it and uh, found that picture and uh, was able to recreate uh, what it looked like originally. So thank you, Mose. And uh, so if you go to, um, we belong to, to we belong to the Henry Ford and Greenfield Village, so we do go over there, and uh, I can't wait to go go see it. Although I think I've probably seen it. I've been there twice already, but they uh, they just did the announcement on that. All right, so we're going to open up with the Psalm as we always do, and it is Psalm 98 today. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him victory. The Lord has made known his victory, but he, he has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. We move on to our uh, prophetic reading, which is uh, Jeremiah. We're in the 32nd chapter still. We heard, heard about uh, Jeremiah buying um, a worthless piece of property from his cousin um, and then uh, putting the titles into an earthen jar, a, a time capsule of sense. And with the with the promise saying that the Lord had told him that he was going to redeem the nation. So, um, so the armies of Babylon have, have ravaged uh, Israel and uh, are at the gates of uh, Jerusalem. And Jeremiah is in prison uh, because the king, because when he prophesied about the fall of the king, the king didn't like it. So he said, well, I'm putting you in prison. All right, here we go. After I had given the deed of purchase to Baroque, son of Neri, I prayed to the Lord, saying, Ah, Lord God, it is you who made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. You show steadfast love to the thousandth generation, but repay the guilt of the parents into the laps of their children after them. O great and mighty God, whose name is the Lord of hosts, Great in counsel and mighty in deed, whose eyes are open to all the ways of mortals, rewarding all according to their ways and according to the fruit of their doings. You showed signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, and to this day in Israel and among all humankind, and have made yourself a name that continues to this very day. You brought your, your people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and wonders, with a strong hand and outstretched arm and with great terror. And you gave them this land, which you swore to their ancestors to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they entered and took possession of it. But they did not obey your voice or follow your law of all you commanded them to do. They did nothing. Therefore, you have made all these disasters come upon them. See, the siege ramps have been cast up against the city to take it. And the city, faced with sword, famine, and pestilence, has been given into the hands of the Chaldeans who are fighting against it. What you spoke has happened, as you yourself can see. Yet you, O Lord God, have said to me, buy the field for money and get witnesses. So the city has been given into the hands of the Chaldeans. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. So uh, the ramps against the walls of the city, so when back then in ancient times, when um, sieges, you know, the, the reason why walls were around cities was to protect. So um, as attacks came, they would pull down and the walls had the ability for uh, archers and, and uh, things. They, uh, they had some really nasty stuff that they would do during siege. But um, one thing that they would do is they would put a ramp up 
and uh, um, sometimes if the wall was small enough, they would co construct the ramp and roll it up against it. And other times they actually had to uh, bring dirt and fill, and they laid it against the outside walls until they got up to there. Now the whole time that you know it was fighting. So um, those are those are uh, those are the things that um, that happened back then. So here it is. It's a, Jerusalem's about to fall, and Jeremiah is still uh, going back and remembering uh, the great things that God has did for the nation of Israel, and also why they are in this situation because of their disobedience, and also uh, giving the hope, the hope of the future. All right. We'll move into our New Testament. We're in Romans chapter 12, verses. 1 through 21. We were in Colossians before, so this is picking up a new a new letter of Paul. And in Romans, he's writing to the church in Rome. It's very late in his career. It's before he uh, uh, he's arrested and taken to Rome where he is uh, uh, killed. But the um, He's trying, at this point, he is trying to recruit the church in Rome to be a sponsor because he wants to go on to another missionary journey, either his third or his fourth, depending upon how you, how you read. Um, but he wanted to go uh, beyond from, he wanted to go further to the West. Um, and uh, he thought that Rome would be a really good kickoff place for him to go to Hispania, which is Spain, modern day Spain, and do some do some evangel uh, evangelical work there. So it's a later letter. And so it's a, the uh, you know what he'd come to really understand and believe about um, the church and Jesus Christ. Um, different from his early letters to to the extent where originally his first earliest letters uh, believed that the Perusia, the, the reappearance of Christ, was was just around the corner, and so. Not to worry about any, just prepare yourself for that. And then as the years went on, and he realized that it wasn't happening right away. His theology, uh, his understanding changes a little bit. Um, but this is this is uh, this letter is great because it's it's also the longest letter that we have from Paul. But it lays down in pretty good detail what the earliest Christians understood um, about uh, about the way God worked in Christ. So it's very informative to us. So here it is. We're going to, this one's from the 12th chapter, and it's verses 1 through 21. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually, we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry and ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought 
for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this you will help a heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. Great advice, right? Great life advice about uh, if we believe and, um, and, and we possess the Holy Spirit that these things which would be impossible to do on our own are possible. And by doing so, we change the, the whole structure of, of the world. But boy, is it tough, isn't it? It's really tough. And um, some, and it, the good thing here is that we're not expected to do it all, right? It says, you know, we, we, we are one in the body of Christ, um, but we've each been given gifts, right? And, um, and it says according to the grace. So it's not that somebody's been given more grace. It's just that when grace is delivered, um, you know, we're, 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 with that comes this freedom to use a gift that God has given us. And he lists them out. And, uh, maybe you heard something that, that applies to you there. But, uh, um, but it's not an exhaustive list. There's lots of other gifts, too. But I think the biggest thing that I take out of this is the humbleness, right? Uh, you need to be humble. You can't be proud. Pride, uh, pride will deliver uh, this thought that you are actually um, a lot more powerful than you are. Um, so, and I, and I have to say that uh, the greatest people that I've met are, are really humble. You know, they they're um, they're not prideful. Uh, uh, I mean, they're they're driven, they're driven, but they're not they're not uh, uh, not again, not everybody. I mean, I've met a lot of people that are pretty, pretty full of themselves, and uh, you know, talk about the things that they do. Uh, it's always them. It's never about the people that help them get this done. So, good, good lessons for today, right? Love one another. Gospel. We're reading out of Luke. And this is. Um, Chapter 8, verses 1 through 15. And uh, we're, so Luke is, um, Luke is giving an account of the travels of Jesus, right, as he goes around. And, um, and he, he teaches, interacts with people. So um, let's see what God has for us today. Soon afterwards, he, Jesus, went on through the cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. When a great crowd gathered, and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell on the path that was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, Let anyone with the ears to hear listen. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to others I speak in parables, so that, uh, so that looking they may not perceive, and listening they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones on the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy, but those have no root. They believe only for a while, and in a time of testing fall away. As for what fell among the thorns, 
These are the ones who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. But as for that in the good soil, these are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patient endurance. So in this reading of the word of the Lord, all thanks be to God. I love this passage, and then I also have great concerns about this passage. Um, the um, um, my, first, my concern is that it, it it almost sets up this patriarchal thing. Here's the twelve the twelve disciples that are with him, and then some women, right? And he talks about and, it's, and the women, I'd say, and they had been cured of evil, you know, spirits and infirmities, and so then they calls out Mary. Mary Magdalene, who had seven demons and had gone out. So we actually know, we know that these women were so, so important to Jesus' ministry. And he had an incredible amount of respect and care and love for them. Um, but uh, Luke, uh, through just this thing, has just kind of put them into a subservient role. And that's, uh, that's really a, a poor reading of this. Um, you know, certainly there was, it was a patriarchal um, society, so that was there. But when we take a look at where women would ordinarily what they had in that society, that, that Jesus actually elevated the women to a much greater thing. And uh, we know that there was some, um, there was some very powerful uh, women that uh, were attracted to this. In fact, um, they were powerful. We had Joanna, who was the wife of Herod Stewart. So Herod, right? Um, the, this was a Roman person, right? Or, or, or a Jewish person that served a Roman. So she was a believer, right? And, and uh, Susanna, right? These, these women, they had resources. They were very well off. And that's how, that's how, um, that's how the, the, the disciples were able to go out and do go about and do their work because it was paid. So um, anyway, so that's my great that, that's my great concern about this, and then my great joy about this passage is the fact that it's one of the couple times that Jesus actually explains a parable. He speaks in parables, which are these great stories that um, have a lot of openings for interpretation, and it also has the opportunity for us to put ourselves in the many different positions. Um, roles within the parable. Um, and so it also means that it has multiple applications. Um, but this one, he says, look, uh, this is why I speak in parables, right? Those who can, those who have received the spirit can hear and understand. And then, um, but he also unpacks this one, right? He talks about, and, and the way that he unpacks it about the stories about the seed and where they fall, um, is just as valid today, right? Just as valid today as it was back then. Because we've all seen people who have um, hit a really hard spot in life and they have no hope and then all of a sudden um, they rely, you know, they come to rely on God and they have a they have a, a, an incident where they, they're really saved. Um, and then, but then when things turn around and things that could be better, they kind of just push that off to the side. So, um, happens all the time, all the time today. All right. Oh, I missed all sorts of stuff here. Let me go back. I see that we've got Margo's putting up our readings for today. Thank you very much. So we had happy birthday to John and I see that we have Patty is having a birthday too. So happy birthday, Patty. All right. Hi, Barbara Wolf. Oh, Patty Johnson's with us. Happy birthday. Oh, and Carrie was there, so she must have gotten busy. Hi, Tracy Crutz. Art Hughes. There it is. Carrie put up the right there, the click on Detroit. Hi, Ann Winslow. Hi, 
Hi, Ellen. There, I got through it all. There we go. Okay, so I might have missed somebody. If I did, I apologize. I always do. I've got to go back. I'm over on another page as I'm doing these lectionary readings. And so when I go back and to the Facebook, um, number one, there's an explosion of, of, of uh, the emojis uh, because it saves them all up. And when I open they all come up, it's just great. But then, you know, all of the uh, comments and everything, I've got to go back and look. So um, sometimes uh, in scrolling through those, I might miss a few. So if uh, I do, I do apologize if I didn't, if you put a note up there and I didn't welcome you. All right, so yeah, we got a lot to pray for today. First of all, we need to pray for thankfulness, you know, for uh, Steve Stapleton and the person that he was and how important he was um, to uh, so many people and to this church. And then we need to pray for his family that they may be comforted in this time of loss. And, um, and for everybody here because we feel that sadness and loss too and we need to pray for people who are in need of healing so um let's pray that's going to be our focus today if that's okay with you guys lord we thank you for this day we thank you for the uh, the rains that we received that gentle rain that uh, we're, we're actually in a drought and um, you, you didn't send torrents of rain that do little you sent a gentle rain that uh, soaked the ground and um, allowed uh, all of the, the burgeoning plants that we see around us to soak up uh, much needed moisture and nutrients. That's how you feed us too. Uh, you give us your word, you give us your Holy Spirit, and uh, sometimes we think it's like drinking out of a fire hose, but other times but we really know that you never give us any more than we don't need. So we would just ask that you let us soak up all of these, uh, your word that gives us the spiritual and emotional uh, nutrients that we need, grow us in faith and uh, mature our faith, and because we need we need it, we need to understand as we process the things that happened in this world, the fact that the kingdom of God has not arrived yet, that the promise of eternal life, in in a, in a merged heaven and earth, is yet to occur. So we pray for all the saints who have passed before us. Many of them have led us into a closer relationship with you. Our lives have been expanded and, and, uh, and greatly, uh, greatly made joyful by their presence. And so we, we pray for the Stapleton family. We know that uh, Steve is with you and has been welcomed into your kingdom. But uh, those of us who survive, uh, we're, we're really feeling that loss today. So we would pray for comfort for all, and also that you continue to allow the light of the hope and the resurrection to shine through these times of darkness. And Lord, we pray for healing for all who are in need of it, for people who are undergoing medical procedures and treatments, those who are ill. Lord, we thank you for um, all the vaccines that are present. We thank you that things seem to be improving, although we still have such a significant problem around us. So Lord, uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for gathering us here today. And uh, we pray all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Amen, all. God bless you. I will uh, see you all tomorrow. And, uh, love you all and um, have a great day in the Lord. Bye-bye.